Hey everybody, I am Lala from This Black Girl Reads and today I'll be talking about the top 10 books of 2019 with two of my favorite well-read black girls. Hi everybody, I'm Tanya from Let's Connect Sisters. We're very excited that you're joining us today for another lit collaboration. I'm Brandy from Styles by Night, an avid reader, and I'm really happy to be here today. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, although we didn't agree on all of the books, we still have a mighty, mighty list. So, Tanya, can you get us started with your first book? Sure. So, the first book that I'm going to talk about is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. Um, really enjoyed this book. I actually, rather than reading the physical copy, I listened to it as an audiobook. And the reader is excellent. It's a British voice, um, really gets into the patois pieces of the book. So the book really is about a um, bit of a coming of age book about a 25 year old uh, black female who is very much in love with a white man. And she particularly tends to date um, white men. And you learn more about why she does that and, and her experiences. But it is a funny book. I was laughing. She, um, um, the author touches on what it's like to sort of be second generation uh, Jamaican Brit, uh, but also the challenges of the dating world and even delving into dating apps and being unable to let go of relationships when they fail. Um, touches on relationships that are awkward with mother and daughter. Excellent, excellent book. I do have to say, and I don't know if you guys um, would agree with me. I know Lala, you and I were talking about this. I wanted to, at one point, knock her over the head oh, with this book, this absolutely. character. So the main character, uh, Queenie herself, uh, was so dependent yeah. on this one relationship with Tom. Mm -hmm. And she just couldn't let go of it. Could not let go. Yeah. But anyways, I we all know. about yeah. this book was the mental health aspect. Yes. Hmm. It really highlighted mental health in the, in the black community and for black women. Yeah. And I think that's such an important conversation to, to have because yeah. it's very prevalent, right? I appreciated that. And I also appreciated that the, the character was a larger black woman and um, some of the struggles um, that we face when we're sort of objectified for our bodies and not seen as people. So lots of topics were touched on, especially the mental health and body image, self image and all types of topics, but definitely a, a, one of my top reads for 2019. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is Golden Child by Claire Adam. And I also did this book on audiobook, which was a very, very good read. The, ac the accents were kind of a little challenging, but it was still a good thing to listen to. So it's an absolutely beautifully written story that takes place in rural Trinidad and exposes the ugly corruption that tears apart families and tears apart the community. So it follows the Della Hansing family, and there is um, the main character is the dad, Clyde, and he also has two twin boys. One of them is so brilliant, and he ends up winning like the scholarship for the island. And one of them has kind of a learning disability, um, and um, he kind of he is kind of not the golden child to his parents. So that's the child that ends up um, going missing. And Clyde, the father, has to choose between if he's going to pay the ransom to get his son back or if he's going to save the money to give his golden child more opportunities. So that kind of makes you think, okay, if I had to choose between two of my children, what would I choose? Wow. So it's kind of like an impossible kind scenario. of scenario, yeah. right? So um, it was a really beautiful written story. I liked the way the author um, showed kind of the landscape of Trinidad, the climate in Trinidad as well. I've never been to Trinidad, but after reading this, I feel like I did. So awesome. I really love that book. So Brandy, what's your first book? So my first book was Rise and Grind by Damon John. It's a professional development book. And really and truly, I actually really loved this book. Seeing um, as... Damon John, to me at least, was well known for FUBU. That's what I grew up mm -hmm. with, seeing him in rap music videos, clamoring for his clothes. To see him make a transition for millennials, um, may now know him on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. um, to read this book was a real eye-opening insight into 
just how he got to where he was or where he is now and I think he did a fantastic job he drew me in um, from beginning to end it was relational it was um, informative and above all else it was inspirational not only did he give you his tips and his personal um, experiences in grinding and hustling to amass the fortune that he has now but he also brought in a bunch of friends as well so there's about I think 15 or 16 chapters each chapter focuses on a different person and he just gives you some really non like common sense mm -hmm. I would say really common sense tips but really breaks it down for you and what I really loved about this is that you walk away with these nuggets on how to um, be successful mm -hmm. and how to push forward no matter what station you are in life. Mm -hmm. Nice. That one sounds nice. good. I was actually going to read that one. Yeah. yeah. I saw that one and I occasionally watch Shark Tank, so I'll have to put that on right. my list. Yeah. It was sure. actually a really good read. Yeah. I think the next one I'll talk about is this book. Um, it's by a local Toronto author. The book is called Frying Plantain by Zalika Reed Benta. I was really excited about this book. I think the first thing that caught my eye was plantain. I love plantain. So yes. do I. Not plantain. <laughs> plantain. Uh, I was really excited to find out that it was a local um, Toronto author who wrote this book and even the cover of the book has uh, pictures that are familiar if you know uh, Eglinton West area in Toronto so just having an author from the six was really exciting for me what first surprised me with the book was I thought it was going to be one novel it's a bunch of short stories um, and the short stories really take you through Kara Davis's life from elementary to university and all of the experiences that she has with her mother, her grandmother as a, I think, second generation uh, Jamaican Canadian and the struggles of living up to your parents um, expectations. Yeah. And we all know about that. Um, and not want our parents not wanting us to make their mistakes. Yeah, um, she has definitely an overbearing mother who um, probably doesn't want her daughter going down the path that she went as a teenage mother. Uh, I loved uh, the patois throughout the stories and each short story is interconnected. Mm -hmm. So even though you're reading short stories because everything is woven in you do get a right. sense that you've learned all about Kara mm -hmm. and her experiences from learning how to French kiss to getting her first job you know and, and and lots of laughter throughout it so I really recommend this book as one of our top books that is a really good book we both yes. also read that book and we really enjoyed it for sure yeah one of the things I actually loved about this book that really resonated with me was um, also being a first gender, was her feeling of um, otherness. She didn't quite fit mm -hmm. in. Like she had the gaze of Canadians, even though she was a Canadian. Right. Looking at her and saying, like, wh who, where are you from? Right. Yeah. I'm from here. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's so it comes in like she's not Canadian enough um, to be Canadian and not Jamaican, and not Jamaican, Jamaican enough. enough to be Jamaican. <laughs> right, right, I've right. Always yeah. echoed that sentiment. Yeah. So I really um, found a really like a kinship with her. Yeah, I, I love that. A lot. I love that. And really, a shout out to Zalika Benta Reed Benta because we were so happy that yeah. we've actually had um, an event with her. She is an amazing person, even just to meet. And uh, definitely go and get her book. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. And he is the same author from that wrote The Underground, which won tons of awards um, a few years back. So this book centers around um, a reform school that existed in Florida. And this re reform school was um, functioned from the 1900s until it only closed in 2011. And um, it centers around the main character, Alwood, who is raised by his grandmother and works and he gets good grades and he's college bound. And one day he is set to go take some college courses and he um, is hitching for a ride and he gets in a car with someone who stole the car. And through that interaction and that bad decision, he ends up having to go to this reform school mm -hmm. when um, he gets pulled over by the cops. So... Um, 
the actual school that they talk about in the book is an actual school that did exist and through this school there they ended up finding like a mass grave in the in the back oh, of wow. the school where the, it was like a hundred bodies or something oh like gosh. that um they found that like i think it was in 2010 and the and school ended up closing down wow. but they killed a whole bunch of black boys because it was a bunch of black boys that went to that school and through his story he kind of tells a school t- tells a story about the school and some of the atrocities that happened in the school um and it's such a really impactful read because it takes a part of history but it also tells a story through this one character and um yeah i really like that book So I think for me, this was definitely the year of um, self-development. So I read a bunch of biographies, a bunch of uh, professional and self-development books. One of uh, my top picks was More Than Enough, um, Claiming Space for Who You Are No Matter What. And it was by Elaine Welteroth. Honestly, if you haven't read this book, this is a must read. Mm. To be quite frank, it was an amazing book. If you're unfamiliar with Elaine Welteroth, Um, She's actually the first black woman to helm a major Vogue publication, specifically Teen Vogue, that's now unfortunately defunct. But um, yeah, she basically talks about her experiences growing up as a biracial child, and it reads as a memoir meets a call to action. loved the book while she does um do a service to both of her parents by acknowledging both sides of her i found that um when she talked about herself navigating through the world you can clearly see um that she talked about herself in the scope of being a black woman as the world sees her first um because of the color of her skin now what i would say um I expected going in that it was going to re- be a little bit of a, I was going to be out of touch with it yeah. because she's a millennial and I'm past the millennial stage. Is she a millennial? She, yeah, she is. Oh. I think when she started, she was probably 20, I think 20 something. Okay. When she started. She just accomplished Vogue, a lot. But yeah, she just yeah. accomplished a lot in yeah. a short time. Um, but what I will say is that I loved it. I resonated with her. Um, I found it was an honest depiction. I think in her being so honest and truthful with the readers and transparent, she really found a way to ask for permission to go ahead and start um, giving out calls to action and just asking people to, you know, make more of themselves. So though it was geared towards millennials, I did find a lot of valuable information Mm -hmm. and I would actually recommend it to millennials as well as people older than that as long as you are uh looking for something that is going to help you find your way of self-discovery and being tenacious this is definitely a book to read i definitely love that book and i wasn't expecting to love it as yeah. much as i did neither was i because i thought it was going to be very fluffy for some reason absolutely but there was so many gems that i was like writing down and i was like yeah. oh yes and yes. what i loved is is the anecdotes that she had yeah she was very much a roundaway girl. I yeah. did not expect that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Especially coming from a um, a biracial family. Didn't expect that at all. I There was one, I don't know if you remember, but um, quickly, there was one moment when she was talking about um, this guy that had expressed an interest in her and was pursuing her, but she was dating this other guy. Oh, yes, yes. And has this birthday party and the both of them show yes. up. Yes. Uh-oh. And... Trying, like, like that's never happened to you before. And trying to get her friend <laughs> to um, help her out and be yeah. a wingman and kind of navigate yeah. things. And the friend just saying to her, like, you're just real messy. Yeah. Right? That's not a friend. No, I, just I think it was. I think she was a friend. She was very real with her. She was like, you know what? You're messy and I don't want to part. Like, oh, I'm your friend, but I want to part of this. I'm going to keep it real with you. We're going to keep it 100. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. You know, she didn't come across as saying like, oh, I'm perfect. Yeah. Right. I worked hard. Right. Yeah. And, you know, if you, she literally was like, yeah. there, I, but there were some times, shady things too. There were times <laughs> where I was the queen of shade and did some shady yeah. things. Yeah. But, you know, I learned from the experience. I took it and parlayed it into who I am now. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds really Absolutely. good. And if you don't follow her uh, Instagram, I do. You follow. need to. Yeah. 
Oh, I okay. Her. Also, I don't. You I need to follow her. Follow After her. I read the, I didn't know about her before I, mean, I read yeah. the book, and then I read the book, and then I started following her Instagram, and it's like, yeah. yeah. I'm going to follow her right after this. Did your book club read that book? No, we might read that I book. Wonder if, yeah, I wonder if we should recommend it for a book club. Yes, yeah. we should. Yeah, We should. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching part one of the best books of 2019. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in part two.